Hi everybody, this is Stephen Pugh from the Home Bible College. I want to give a small lecture for the students of the Home Bible College for the second year. And we're looking today, uh, this is lecture number seven, and we're looking at the little books of Judges and Ruth. Ruth is a very little book and Judges is a little bit bigger. Now Judges is an Old Testament book of 21 chapters. I call it the 12 heroes of Israel. And it's complementary to the books at the end of the Old Testament, which I call the Twelve Prophets of Israel. So this is an Old Testament book. It, it may have been written by Samuel, and the book covers a period of about 325 years. Now, the period of the Judges um, starts after the victories of Joshua, to before Saul becomes king. So this is great period of time when they don't really have king uh, and they don't really have Joshua. They have judges. And these judges are men of God. They're often prophets of God and some of them are priests of God. But more than that, they are military commanders. And they're used by God to bring deliverance to the children of Israel. So the book shows the disobedience or the partial obedience, which is, a re which is being repeated again and again. And so we have disaster and we have the Lord saving them and then disaster and the Lord saving them. And, and God loves his people and they only need to turn back to him. And the book also shows that God can and will use defective people to fulfill his purposes. These were days when there was no king. There was little civilization and everybody did what was right in his own eyes. And perhaps the greatest judge was Deborah. A woman of courage and of insight. Perhaps the greatest failure was Samson, a man of the flesh. Um, like Solomon, his greatest victory was on the day when he finally died in the flesh. And so through the book of Judges, Israel seems to be locked into a cycle of victory and defeat. And we have um, 12 um, we have 12 stages, you could say, that's constantly repeated. For example, number one, we will have the nation is serving God. And then the second stage is the nation do evil in the sight of the Lord. The third stage is that the nation forsakes their God. The fourth stage is the nations follow their own way. Uh, the fifth stage is the nation is sold into slavery or oppression. The sixth stage is the nation suffers in slavery. Uh, the seventh is the nation serve in hard bondage, some sort of oppressor. Uh, the eighth stage is the nation cries unto the Lord. The ninth stage is the nation humbles themselves before the Lord. The tenth stage is the nation turns from their sins uh, the eleventh stage is God raises up a judge and the twelfth stage is that the judge delivers the nation from their oppressors and then what happens they go back to stage number one again and the nation is serving God and so there's this constant cycle of victory and defeat and victory and defeat um, Perhaps if we had to have a text that summarizes the message of the book, it would be Proverbs chapter 15, verse 34. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so we see Israel, um, they don't conquer all of their enemies. This is very sad. And the judges are raised up one by one. However, when the judge dies or moves on, then Israel sinks back into uh, division. Um, so the book is divided into a number of stages. The first part of the book from chapter one to the end of chapter two, we have the introduction to the period of the judges. We find that more land is occupied. However, some of the land is left unoccupied. And we see that the angel of the Lord appears at Bochim um, and Joshua dies. This is a very important thing. And Israel falls into um, idolatry. They serve Baal and they serve Ashtaroth. 
Um, and so begins the period of the judges in chapter 3. And so from chapter 3 right the way through to chapter 16, we see this constant cycle. And each of the judges, not only do they bring a great victory, but they also have inherent weaknesses within themselves as well. And we come right the way through the stories till we get into chapter 17, which is the, the, the story of the effect of the period of the judges. We have the idols of Micah, Micah's priest, Micah and the tribe of Dan, Levite and his concubine. Israel punishes Benjamin for their sin. And then we have the nation, sorry, the tribe of Benjamin is virtually annihilated. And so Israel have to go to extraordinary means to actually save um, the tribe of uh, Benjamin otherwise it would have passed off into oblivion so this is the story of the judges now alongside the story of the judges we also have the beautiful story which is only four chapters the story of Ruth so let's look at that for just a few moments if I wanted to put a name for this book I would call it grace to a Gentile grace to a Gentile. It's taken in the period of the um, Judges and the book of Ruth describes the events that occurred during the period of the Judges of Israel. The author is unknown but it could have been Samuel again and it's a tragedy and a love story and God shows grace to Ruth, a Moabitess, and he brings her right into blessing. The key verse could be in chapter 3, verse 18, uh, which says, Then said she, this is Naomi, she says to Ruth, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall, for the man will not be in rest until he hath finished this thing today. There was a period, you see, in the time of the judges when the Moabites came and oppressed the children of Israel and God forsook Israel and the Moabites oppressed them and this little family um, this little family of Naomi she they go down into um, they go down into um, the country of the Moabites and they the two sons uh, they take they take wives of the women of Moab, of Moab and uh, the father dies and then the two sons die and the question then is this will the inheritance of the family of Naomi will it perish completely and of course the story is no they won't perish completely they hear that God has blessed the children of Israel so they come back into the land it's um, Orpah who decides that she won't come back she'll stay with her father's house but Ruth pleads with Naomi to let her come back with her she not only um, as, uh, uh, loves Naomi but she loves the God of Naomi and so they come into the land and they come into the land at the time of the barley harvest and they meet this man Boaz and all his servants and uh, chapter one is Ruth's love for Naomi chapter two is Ruth seeks Boaz as a husband there was a way a cultural way whereby a woman could show her her uh, interest in a man to be her husband and then we have in chapter 3 where Ruth is sought by Boaz and then finally in chapter 4 we have Ruth's love for Boaz they married and they have a child and of course that child becomes the line that leads all the way to King David and all the way to the Lord Jesus. So this is God's grace to Ruth. And it's how God can restore the life of an Israelite woman whose husband and whose sons have gone far away from the Lord and have come under the judgments of God and how God can restore her and bring her back into the land and bring her daughter-in-law into blessing and how the seed can continue on so it's a beautiful love story so we recommend this little book to you i think you're going to find it uh, a wonderful 
wonderful book to read. In fact, the whole of the book of Judges and Ruth, they're just beautiful. Well, we look forward to speaking to you next week. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.